Big business, big unions tipping in big dollars into our major political parties. And now, Peter Malinowska says enough is enough. If I'm honest about it, I think it's about time that South Australians decided to engage in our own debate about how we think our democracy should look, particularly around the issue of electoral funding. The 5AA Breakfast Show. Weekday mornings from 6 on 1395. Adelaide's 5AA. Interactive Radio. Tweet at 1395 5AA. Peter Godfrey. Across the ditch we go to New Zealand. Selwyn Manning joins us from livenews.co.nz. That's the news from that part of the world. How are you, Selwyn? Yeah, very good, Peter. That's the way. And as uh, Basil Fawlty used to say, uh, we'll just vary his comment a bit. Uh, let's uh, you know, don't talk about the rugby. <laughs> don't talk about that war that <laughs> took place on the weekend. Oh, yeah. How long since it's been a, a, a nil score? Uh, nil score for the Wallabies since nine. It hasn't been for 50 years. 1962 Ooh. against the All Blacks was the was last 20, time. Uh, 22 to nil. Yeah. Ouch, yeah. that hurts. That hurts. It, it was a, yeah. The, uh, the best team clearly won on the day. <laughs> yeah, and just, you know, always try to kind of balance it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the Australian team is still considered to be the second best in the world at rugby. Is that right? Okay. So there you go. Mm, right. Is there a bit of a ditch between the two? A bit wider than the Tasman perhaps. Quite clearly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, on to some news stories. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah. your uh, a bill, the Definition of Marriage Amendment Bill, or in other words, Same-Sex Marriage Bill, it's uh, yeah. passed its first reading in the, uh, the New Zealand Parliament. Yeah, it did last night, Peter. Um, it was a huge majority that voted in favour of uh, of this bill going to its first um, reading. Um, and that was 80 votes to 40. So two-thirds of Parliament um, supported the bill. Uh, and that maps really what the polling was in the general New Zealand public, which came in at around two to one as well. Okay. So it's a decisive victory. One, one can ex- assume from this, it'll go, what will happen is the process, you know, it passes the Parliament's first reading. It'll now go to the select committee where the politicians sit down in committee, you know, and they discuss the nuts and bolts of, of the law. Um, Crown law and others will work on the legislation, make sure it's all watertight. Um, it will then go back to Parliament for its second reading. One would expect with that kind of vote that it will go through. Um, and then it will be enacted into law with what they call the third reading, which is basically the formality of getting it through. So we're expecting um, you know, this law to be not too far away. And what it will be, like you said, Peter, that will allow and make it legal for people of the same sex to marry in New Zealand. Well, OK, you're way ahead of us on that one, that's for sure. Was yes. it uh, was it uh, uh, fairly well divided across the parliament where the, the, the yes or the no votes came from, or was it sort of, you know, specific to parties? You know, it's spread around. Um, uh, New Zealand First, um, the centrist um, party, they voted against the bill, not on the principles of morality or anything like that. That didn't come into it. It was um, their, their pitch um, as a party was uh, this type of, um, legislation is one of the conscience vote. There isn't morality aspect to it. It should be what, by way of referendum that the public should direct the uh, the show, really, not the politicians. Um, that, 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 that was uh, yeah, that that was the main one from the point of view of process, I suppose, and not not objecting to the bill or the purpose of the bill in a, in a sense. Then there were others, the social conservatives. Um, you could see that there were some that had changed their mind and voted for it. Uh, on the basis that um, one, like Dr Paul Hutchison, uh, who had come from the Nationals uh, and a social conservative, he said there was no moral, religious, spiritual or legal purpose for him not to vote in favour of the bill um, when he looked at it closely. And so that was a big win for them. What was clearly evident was the, the younger, new wave of new generation MPs, um, particularly in the National Party, they, they spoke very persuasively in favour of the bill. And remember, the bill was put forward by a Labour Party MP, a new MP for Munnery, were electorate in South Auckland, Louisa Wall. So right across the parliament, you could see it was the issue, not the party or the person that was being chased here. And there was some in- interesting, in, in some cases, like in the case of Nikki Kaye, that represents Auckland Central MP. She's a national MP, second termer, uh, uh, young, early 30s, and uh, she... Really, her speech was like a, a speech of coming of political age in a sense. I don't mean that in a patronising sense, but it was a very, very powerful, powerful speech mm. and in favour of the bill. So what sort of a timeline are we looking here before it gets to that third reading? Uh, well, you could expect, you know, by the end of the year, okay. um, if not, it'd be in the early new year. But um, one would expect it'd be in this, this year. 
Okay. Well, very good. All right, moving on to other things. Um, yeah. Pacific Islands Forum uh, yeah. is on this week. Uh, we've seen our Prime Minister being carried aloft on carried uh, yeah. <laughs> on, uh, on the shoulders of... Uh, it does, of uh, doesn't happen on the visits to South Australia, Peter. Uh, uh, mean, uh, Julia Gillard. Uh, no, 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 no. Despite uh, the speaker hometown, <laughs> no, no. I think she's uh, she might, <laughs> might if she want to stay there. Yeah, she might want to relish the experience, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Um, it's the same with John Key. He doesn't seem to get carried in uh, too too much around uh, New Zealand either. Um, he's a very popular Prime Minister, of course, but uh, certainly the pomp and ceremony that's been displayed in uh, the Cook Islands and Rarotonga over this is, is something else. And uh, what, what's a big interest at this Pacific Islands Forum is really the Pacific has become like we have spoken to and like no doubt, you know, um, Australia has um, been watching and observing um, the, the two main global powers, China mm. and the United States, are eyeing the Pacific very much as a territorial uh, strategic asset, if you like. Um, and the United States has announced, um, Washington DC announced this week that Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, will arrive in the Cook Islands on Sunday. Um, she'll be travelling with what is considered to be the biggest US delegation ever to attend the Pacific Island Forum. So the United States is moving to counter China's influence across the Pacific, mainly with the Melanesian, the smaller Melanesian states and the Polynesian states, um, but certainly China's um, influence by way of development aid and, and uh, low-cost loans across the Pacific has gained quite a uh, quite a quite a um, yeah quite a, quite a lot of support from from the governments of the Pacific Island states. Now the, the United States has been trying to counter that and to pick up its its kind of game in the Pacific. And this is why, for the first time in well, I can remember, that the actual Secretary of State is arriving and 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 um, to to um, take part in the the uh, forum um, post forum dialogue. Yeah, because so she's not there for the whole forum, is she? She's just no. at the tail end of it. This, this is the key significant thing, you see. So the leaders' summit started. The, the official opening was last night. They get down to business tonight. They go into a retreat where they kind of work out, you know, their, their positions. They can They'll come out probably Friday uh, <clears throat> with a communique saying, you know, this is what we want to do in the next 12 months, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they'll they'll be all smiling and happy with wearing their funny shirts, and off they'll go. Um, back home. Then the real business starts in the post-forum dialogue uh, and that goes for a few days over the weekend into um, into Monday, Tuesday. And that's where you've got the, United, um, the European Union, China, Japan, um, the United States sitting down saying, OK, this is what we want to do for you. What we expect to get in return is this. And that's where the big money starts to get dished around. And that was always, from a journalist point of view, the main interesting aspect of the, of, of, of the, of the Pacific Islands Forum was there. That's where you see the thing. Now, we know the EU, EU, for example, the European Union, it has a lot of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars, to dish out um, to uh, realise what it had committed to in the, um, the post-millennium goals, um, the Millennium um, Development Goals, and it's been eyeing the Pacific as a place where it can measure outcomes. And so the EU is very significant. Obviously China is too, and the United States is saying we're not going to get um, you know, left out of this, this show here. So they're coming with the big fanfare. Mm, indeed. Uh, and just one final thing to wrap up. Uh, I had a call from Brenton, who's one of our regular callers earlier. Uh, he's just wondering if you can give us a bit of an update. That uh, the, the cargo ship that ran aground off, uh, mm. off New Zealand some time ago, the Rena, uh, yeah. the one that broke up, is there any developments in what, what is actually happening with that, uh, with that yeah. ship? Um, salvers have still been working actively on it. Um, the, the ship is broken in two. Yeah. Um, the hull is uh, kind of sitting on the reef. You can clearly see it. It hasn't. You know, the, the reef is quite shallow, um, and the rest of the um, the hull is kind of just sitting there too. Um, they, they've got all the containers that you can possibly get from the top, and significant amount from down below. Uh, <clears throat> there has been uh, attention and concerns on the fact that. It looks like it's too dangerous for the salvers to get down into the deeper part of the hull um, while the arena is kind of precariously sitting on these, this reef. Can it be pulled off? That's one of the questions that was there. The salvers are saying, well, no, not really. Even if it was down in the deeper water on the sides of the reef, um, there's still the danger of the swells and the undercurrents um, moving it around, making it extremely difficult. So <clears throat> there are still toxic uh, chemicals in the sense 
um, presumed to be in the bottom part. Um, there's certainly pockets of sealed um, crude oil that are sitting there, uh, and it's um, obviously going to be quite a concern for a lot many years to come. Mm. Um, as far as the cost is concerned, um, New Zealand's got the strange law where it can only... Um, seek compensation from those responsible uh, for, for, for going aground and, and the environmental hazard um, up to a certain amount. And by memory, it's only like about $14 million or $20 million. And, of course, this cost is going well and above over that. You're looking, you know, well, well over that. Um, so there's all sorts of concerns there. Can it happen again? Of course it can. And that, those are the concerns the Kiwis had relating to the type of cargoes that were going across into, into that particular port at Tauranga Port, um, coming from overseas carrying uh, um, uranium and uh, on, on mm. its way to, to the United States mainly. Okay. Um, and of course, remember, New Zealand's very sensitive to issues yeah. relating to uranium with its anti-nuclear laws. Indeed, indeed. Tuan, many thanks for that update. Uh, we will catch you again uh, same time next week for more news from New Zealand. All the best, Peter. Thanks, mate. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. And you can head to someone's website, livenews.co.nz, for more as well. 28 minutes past five, and Stone has new sport and weather next.